In the negative zone, Annihilus has captured the Hulk. They are seeking an unknown substance that appears within the Avenger every time he transforms from Bruce Banner to his monstrous counterpart. The servants of the tyrant Annihilus force the transformation within Banner and manage to isolate the unknown substance. This chemical will grow Annihilus's currently underdeveloped body, and with the added power of the Cosmic Control Rod, the Lord of the Negative Zone will be stronger than ever. The leader removes his iconic carapace, and the process begins. Annihilus experiences extreme pain and discomfort, but his scientist Baltar is confident that this was just part of the process. The tyrant's follower Blastar is worried, but Baltar says that it would be wise to forget their great leader ever had such a moment of weakness. Within moments, the process is complete, and an unarmored Annihilus rises, bigger and better than ever. With all eyes on the restored king, Pip the Troll is able to sneak in and remove the device that is keeping the Hulk docile. The Hulk wakes up, and Blastar immediately knocks him off the tower to protect Annihilus. The Hulk is no longer needed by the forces of the Negative Zone, so the servants are ordered to attack the transformed banner. In all the commotion, Pip was knocked unconscious and buried under some rubble. Using a set of jet boots, Blaster and the Hulk do battle in the streets of the Negative Zone until backup arrives. But few are stronger than the Hulk, who is able to easily rip apart the Emperor's Royal Guard and drops an entire building on Blaster. The Hulk stands victorious, but this is short-lived as he is suddenly approached by Annihilus. Wearing a new set of armor, the Lord of the Negative Zone is ready to stop the Avenger. But the Hulk has only one thought about all of this. Smash! Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Thanos vs. the Hulk number 3. Now this was a cool issue. If you want to learn more about the significance of the writer Jim Starlin, you should go and watch my review of the first issue of this four-part miniseries. I don't want to repeat myself, but it is pretty clear to me that with issue 3, Starlin is doing a really nice job with this series, and I'm enjoying myself quite a bit. This comic is largely great. I just adore the art, which is once again vividly detailed and really stunning in terms of cool things we get to see. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever seen Annihilus without his famous armor, and it was pretty cool to see him like that. Personally, I've always liked the villain, so it's neat to see him in a new way like this. I also really enjoyed the action and fight scenes in this comic, with the Hulk ending this issue's conflict by dropping a whole building on somebody, this was bound to be a lot of fun. Plus, I'm on the whole enjoying and loving this story which features a nice eclectic collection of various characters in the cosmic world of Marvel. It makes things feel like Thanos vs. the Hulk takes place within a much larger, broader universe which is exactly the sort of feeling I enjoy in stories like this. Now there are two weaknesses I identified in this comic. First, for a story with his name on it, Thanos is conspicuously absent in this issue, and I find that quite weird. The way this story is going, Thanos will hopefully make a surprise appearance in some form of the upcoming final part of the story, but otherwise this comic looks like it's setting up a big final confrontation between Annihilus and the Hulk instead. Personally, I don't mind, as I find these comics entertaining enough without Thanos, but I get why people might be upset and expect the Mad Titan to show up in this comic when he very much doesn't. And considering how his name is on the cover, I do feel one could be understandably annoyed by this, especially in a short four-part miniseries like this one. This comic also feels like a quick read. It's still a standard length for a comic, but I feel like it reads too fast and just bridges the events until next issue. Still, in spite of what I feel are minor problems, I do recommend this comic. It's worth the cover price if you're like me and a fan of characters like Annihilus, and there's a lot of great art and little moments of clever dialogue that make this a nice and fun read. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Are you enjoying the miniseries so far? What do you expect out of the final issue? We also have a website, Facebook, and Twitter page, so you can stay up to date with our latest regarding our channel. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.